<laughs> the other thing about greenwashing is there is a premium people will pay for eco products. Actually getting people to pay more money for a product that might not even be better. Yeah. So there's a whole ethical issue around it as well. And the Commerce Commission has a whole, they've just recently released in August last year, 2020, they released a whole paper about how they're going to sort of start to go after greenwashing claims mm. because it's not fair on consumers. Mm. It gives businesses a competitive advantage over others that they don't necessarily deserve if they're greenwashing. Mm. And, and yeah, and it's exploitative. Consumer New Zealand does a lot of work around greenwashing too. So actually those are both two good um, organisations mm. to look into yeah. as well. Yeah. 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 Companies are motivated to greenwash in the first place is to keep up mm. with like what's trendy or what consumers want without actually making the effort to change. And yeah. isn't it great that people yeah. do actually, you know, yeah. like it's just evidence, people yeah. do want to do the right thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah that, yeah. yeah, that makes me mad. Yeah. Yeah. I think the thought there, but it, then it's so much harder in practice. People really want to see some real sustainable mm. action. Like we're at the moment um, have been helping the Use Your Own Cup Friday initiative. So um, getting, supporting cafes to just not give out disposable cups every mm. Friday of April uh, and just encourage people to bring reusables, set up like mug libraries mm. and stuff like that. And honestly, like people so into it mm. and it doesn't involve you having to buy fancy alternative compostable cups You're just putting a, a lo-fi solution out there and people really respond well to it so you're actually saving money and getting good response um, just those kinds of things are really awesome so just recognizing that there is a market out there um, mm. and you don't have to manipulate people to, <laughs> yeah. to, to tap into that market True. Yeah. Um, and it's just the way the world is going like we might not get there fast enough to stop ecological collapse sorry down buzz <laughs> but we're still moving in that direction because mm. we recognize that it has to change um, so you know companies that don't move now will be left behind mm. Mm. Yeah, because I mean, even you know, there are there's there's massively growing movements and around ethical investing and, and stuff like that, and you know, people are shifting their money to the kinds of the, the better world that we all want to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Um, Um, Commerce Commission guide that Hannah mentioned earlier um, is, is a good place to start because it's mm -hmm. actually um, it's almost written for businesses yeah. um, to make sure, you know, it's almost like a checklist to make sure that, you know, they are being honest and truthful and transparent about claims they might be making mm -hmm. um, about their products. So that's a really good place to start. So I think too, there's two different questions when we're talking about businesses. It's like, how can businesses not get sucked into greenwashing? Mm -hmm. Like for example, how does a cafe choose amongst all the different packaging options mm. for takeaways on the market that they're then passing on to consumers but so in a sense often businesses are actually consumers themselves yeah. um yeah. so that's a different conversation to how do companies avoid greenwashing in the first place mm. um and i think that second conversation is kind of like well <laughs> you know if you're setting out to greenwash <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like no well, that's a problem so yeah i think I think sometimes, I've personally seen it myself, sometimes people who are developing a product that they think is really good, mm. who perhaps didn't do much research in the beginning when they started to design and, and build their product concept, and then they get so far down the road investing mm. personal investment, economic financial investment, mm. that they just carry on even as they start to realize that it was yeah. the wrong path to choose. And that's a little bit scary when you see that. Um, I don't know if there's anything that can really be done once you're that far down the road. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I generally think that if any product out there that can help us to reduce humanity's demand on material resources mm. is a good way to go. So when you're thinking about packaging, reusable packaging does that. Or if you're thinking about sharing and service approaches to getting your products out to people so we don't all own our own version of everything um, those are kind of mm. the new innovations that are much less likely to be greenwashed yeah. because they're not reliant on continually making a thing yeah. they're relying on changing the way that we do things so that we don't do that
and we've noticed, especially like a lot of the people who are innovating in the sustainability space, like really truly doing exciting things in New Zealand, tend to be quite small businesses mm -hmm. run by like one person. Yeah. <laughs> and um, what we've really started to see is just when those businesses collaborate mm -hmm. and work together with similar businesses, it really helps to grow. So like the mindset of competitiveness is not necessarily always very helpful. Mm -hmm. If you're, you know, on, on the real cutting edge, it helps to, to collaborate and work together. Yeah. yeah. So like one example is all the zero waste grocers around New Zealand have come together to form an association mm -hmm. um, called Sustain Aotearoa. And that's really lovely. They can share suppliers who have, you know, re zero waste supply chains, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, rather than competing to be the best zero waste grocer, yeah. you know. So, yeah, and that, that collaborative spirit, I think we're going to see a lot more of, particularly as we move towards a circular economy, because that requires, you know, coordination across industries and businesses to move together yeah. to, to change. Mm. I think it helps to understand some of the reasons why there hasn't been a lot of movement and truly there is a lot of um, like vested interests, big industry who have sort of had managed to capture some of the policy making yeah. of the, and that has really slowed down progress mm -hmm. and so really keeping an eye out for that um, and being ready to sort of get on board petitions or mm. open letters and that kind of thing to push back on that kind of thing is really important. But um, it's also important to acknowledge that I think that, you know, things are starting to shift a little in New Zealand and we're not a little, a lot. And the Waste Minimisation Act is actually being reviewed. Um, we're going to have a new waste strategy as well. And so there may be sort of more expansive powers and more appetite to use them. Mm. But I think one of the things I've noticed in New Zealand, and it's probably the same, that so much of the policy activity and the investment activity is still focusing on the bottom of the waste hierarchy, so more recycling, more recycling, basically. Mm. <laughs> um, and that's really tricky because if you invest there, like you just make that bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and it becomes harder mm. and harder and harder to move up to things like prevention and reduction and reuse. And so I think what people can really do is start to think about the kinds of changes that we need to get into that prevention and reuse mm -hmm. space and then get on board some of the campaigns that are calling for that kind of stuff, like mm -hmm. takeaway throwaways, replacing disposable serviceware with reusable serviceware, refill NZ, looking at setting up more water fountains around New Zealand so that people don't have to get bottled water, mm -hmm. like that's, you know, waste prevention, reuse. Um, Oh, Consumer New Zealand's got a Built to Last campaign, which is about having longer lasting electronic products. Um, and if they last longer, obviously you've got less going to landfill and you know, there's a lot of potential that can come from those kinds of campaigns. So just mm -hmm. looking out for those kinds of things that are already happening in New Zealand. Yeah. yeah. You know, there is a bit of a conversation too around how Government, and I think it's probably not just a New Zealand issue, but how governments can can do better at actually engaging the public in these issues. And I think mm -hmm. you know, like when you see a a concert, like a consultation about um, you know how the government wants to phase out a whole bunch of hard to recycle and single use plastics, and it's a 80, eight, page. 80, eighty page document, and it's got all this really technical stuff, and it's like you know mm, most accessible. people are just not even going to. Yeah. There are some really interesting things that um, that the government is doing in, in terms of consultation in different ways and getting getting better at that. But but I think just you know actually making this a, a, a proper democratic process where mm -hmm. people can you know a lot of people really care about this stuff and they want to see certain items phased out because they can see that the damage that it's causing. But how do you actually access that whole machine of government in the right way? To, to get your voice heard in the right way, and so, yeah, so I think um, a lot of the campaigns and stuff that Hannah mentioned earlier, a lot of a lot of groups are, are doing some amazing work um, to inform people about what's happening, make it really understandable, so, and you know, um, summarize, you know, m many hundreds of pages of documents mm -hmm. to to the key points. So you know, groups like Zero Waste Network um, do really awesome stuff in, in the waste space and that, and that help people understand what's what's happening in the government level and how we can have our say. So, um, yeah, so it'll be good to see. And I think hopefully things are moving in a more transparent and more engaging 
public engagement kind of direction. So. Mm. It's good, really important to advocate at central government level or local government level. But if you're feeling short on time and overwhelmed, you know, making changes in your own life makes a really big difference. Yeah. And it's mm. part of that. People mm. always trivialise it. But it's, no, it's important. Yeah. It's, it's really part important of that. It's that. political. Like, it mm. is political. As Hannah said, you know, start with simple changes in, in your life and in your households, but spiral out from there and, and you know, look at you know, the different communities you're involved in, you know, your local cafes, your workplaces, your schools, your, your places of worship, um, and are there opportunities there to, to work with some other keen people on little initiatives, even if it's just as simple as, you know, at, at your office at work, you know, can you, instead of getting, you know, um, tea bags that might have plastic in the, in the tea bag, can you go and get loose leaf tea instead and just, you know, set up simple things like that and, you know, often that, that's such a, you know, those can be really effective at actually engaging people who might not otherwise think about those issues. Yeah, um, yeah like just, just looking at, at small opportunities to make those ripples of change, I think mm. is, um, yeah, they're all around us really, so, yeah. Just like look for the opportunities and, yeah, start small. We are, we're all individuals and we, we, you know, there's a lot we can do as individuals, but we also don't need to take the whole world's problems onto our shoulders and so doing doing what we can in the in the areas that we have some kind of influence or participation. And if you bring others along with you you can amplify yeah. your impact and rise yeah. it. <laughs> We're already plotting ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's like, oh, so you can do that now. Woohoo, off you go. Yeah, yeah. Now we can do some. Yeah, so yeah, you can it's that's exciting mm -hmm. when you know we get a whole workplace on board and then you know one person can sort out the milk and the reusable yeah. bottles, one person can get a little compost bucket set up, one mm -hmm. person can change where you get the tea and coffee from and yeah. 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 And it comes back to what you were saying before about like when you feel like you have a community and you're part of something bigger then you feel more empowered and you don't feel alone. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, when you get when you get a win, like you know, you, you go and talk to your local cafe and say, you know, do you do you want to set up a mug library and mm -hmm. you know maybe think about one day a week where you don't give out single use cups and then they say, yeah, let's do it. Mm -hmm. You know, that, how awesome. empowering that is, you know, and like and and that has an influence on other cafes in the area and mm -hmm. you know stuff like. So it's just yeah, and then around the country, you know, and it, mm -hmm. it can all it can inspire inspire around like that. So. Yeah, feeling like we're all working towards something as a community is just so important. Thank you so yeah. much oh, for you, sitting yeah. down and chatting with us. <laughs> yeah, and I letting us speak ramble. for everyone when I say I really appreciate your time and I feel like I learned a lot and that was really good. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, Claire. <laughs>